Do you know how the human hand evolved from climbing trees to creating masterpieces? Join us on History Forge as we explore the incredible journey of the human hand, tracing its transformation from ancient primates to toolmakers, artists, and beyond. Discover the story behind our most versatile and creative tool. Part 1 – Introduction to the Human Hand's Evolution The evolution of the human hand is a story that spans millions of years. It is a story of adaptation and transformation, from the first adaptations that allowed our ancestors to thrive in the trees to the fine-tuning that enabled us to create and manipulate tools, the human hand has evolved to become a unique and essential part of our species' survival and success. Understanding this evolution requires a journey into the distant past, a time when our early primate ancestors first began developing the traits that would one day shape the modern human hand. The structure of the human hand is complex. It is a delicate balance of bones, muscles, tendons, and ligaments. This balance allows for both strength and precision. The human hand is capable of lifting heavy objects, gripping tightly, and performing tasks that require extreme dexterity. But it wasn't always this way. The story of how the human hand evolved to its current form is a testament to the power of adaptation and natural selection. To begin this journey, it is important to understand the basic anatomy of the human hand. The hand consists of 27 bones. These bones include the carpals, wrist bones, metacarpals, bones of the palm, and phalanges, bones of the fingers. The thumb, or pollex, is especially noteworthy. It is opposable, meaning it can be brought across the palm to touch the fingertips. This opposability is a defining feature of the human hand, it allows for the precision grip, which is essential for activities such as writing, manipulating small objects, and using tools. The thumb's opposability sets the human hand apart from those of many other primates. However, this trait did not appear suddenly. It evolved over millions of years as early primates adapted to their environments. The story of the human hand's evolution begins in the trees. Around 65 million years ago, the ancestors of all primates lived in a world where trees dominated the landscape. These early primates were small, agile creatures. Their hands were adapted for an arboreal lifestyle. Long, curved fingers allowed them to grasp branches securely. The thumb, while present, was not as developed as it is in modern humans. It was positioned lower on the hand and had limited opposability. Yet, even in this primitive form, the thumb played a crucial role in climbing and moving through the trees. This early stage of thumb development would lay the foundation for more advanced adaptations in the future. As millions of years passed, the hands of these early primates became more specialized. Around 23 to 5 million years ago, during the Miocene epoch, a wide variety of primate species flourished. This era saw significant diversification in primate anatomy. Some species retained their tree-dwelling lifestyle. Others began to adapt to new challenges on the ground. It is during this time that we see the emergence of a more flexible wrist joint, a feature that would become vital for tool use in later hominins. The wrist's ability to rotate and bend allowed for more complex movements. These movements were essential for tasks beyond simple climbing. The transition from an arboreal to a terrestrial lifestyle brought about profound changes in primate evolution. As some species spent more time on the ground, their hands began to adapt to a new range of activities. Walking on two legs, or bipedalism, became a key feature of early hominins like Australopithecus. This shift to bipedalism, which occurred between 4 to 7 million years ago, had a direct impact on the hands. With walking now handled by the legs, the hands were free to explore new functions. They were no longer limited to grasping branches. Instead, they began to develop the ability to manipulate objects on the ground. One of the most significant adaptations during this period was the development of a stronger grip. The fingers, while still long, became more robust. The thumb became more opposable. These changes allowed early hominins to pick up and manipulate objects with greater control. The hands of Australopithecus, for example, show signs of increased dexterity. This species, which lived around 4 million years ago, had hands that were better suited for grasping and holding tools. Though these tools were rudimentary,
they represented a major step forward in the evolution of human-like behavior. As the narrative of human evolution continued, so too did the story of the hand. The hand's role began to shift from a purely physical tool to a means of expressing culture and knowledge. The ability to create and use tools would come to define the genus Homo. It set our ancestors apart from other primates. This transition marks the beginning of a profound change in the relationship between the hand and the mind. It is a change that would shape the destiny of the human species. While the early stages of hand evolution focused on adaptation to physical environments, later stages would focus on adaptation to cognitive and cultural challenges. Understanding how the human hand evolved requires a deep dive into each stage of this journey. From the trees to the ground, from simple grips to the sophisticated dexterity required to craft tools, each step in this journey reveals the intricate interplay between anatomy and behavior. It shows how the hand became an instrument not just of survival, but of creativity and innovation. The evolution of the human hand is a story that continues to unfold. Even today, as we develop new tools and technologies, the hand remains a vital part of what makes us human. This introduction provides a glimpse into the remarkable journey of the human hand. In the chapters that follow, we will explore each stage of this evolution in greater detail. We will see how changes in the environment, diet, and social structures influence the development of the hand, and how the hand, in turn, influenced the evolution of the human mind. It is a story that spans millions of years, but it is also a story that continues to shape the way we interact with the world today. Part 2 Early Primates and Arboreal Life The evolution of the human hand cannot be fully understood without exploring the early stages of primate development. Long before our ancestors walked upright on two legs, they lived in a world dominated by trees. This arboreal lifestyle shaped the anatomy and function of their hands. Millions of years ago, in the dense forests of what is now Africa and Asia, early primates thrived in an environment where agility and dexterity were key to survival. These primates, some of which are the distant ancestors of humans, developed hands uniquely suited for climbing, swinging, and grasping. Their hands were not yet capable of the fine motor skills seen in modern humans, but they were perfectly adapted to their environment. The earliest primates appeared around 65 million years ago, following the extinction of the dinosaurs. These small, nocturnal creatures evolved in a world where new ecological niches opened up. The forests provided food, shelter, and safety from ground-dwelling predators. To survive in this arboreal world, early primates developed hands with long, curved fingers. These fingers allowed them to wrap around branches securely providing stability as they move through the canopy. The thumb, while less developed than in modern humans, was already beginning to play a role in grasping. It was positioned lower on the hand, which limited its range of motion, yet it still provided enough support to assist in climbing. This thumb structure was a critical first step in the evolution of the opposable thumb seen in later species. The adaptation to life in the trees also influenced other aspects of early primate anatomy. The shoulder joints of these primates became more flexible, allowing for a wide range of motion. This flexibility enabled early primates to swing from branch to branch using their arms, a behavior known as brachiation. The hands, therefore, had to be strong enough to bear the weight of the body, yet flexible enough to adjust to different grips and angles. This balance of strength and flexibility would continue to play a role in the evolution of the hand. Even as primates adapted to new environments, the hands of early primates also developed tactile sensitivity. This sensitivity was essential for navigating the complex, three-dimensional world of the forest canopy. Being able to sense the texture and firmness of branches allowed these primates to determine which branches were safe to grasp, and which might break under their weight. This early development of touch sensitivity laid the foundation for the more refined sense of touch seen in later hominins. It is this ability to perceive subtle differences in texture and pressure that would become crucial for tool use. Millions of years later, as time passed, primates continued to evolve, giving rise to a wide variety of species with different adaptations. The Miocene Epoch, which lasted from about 23 to 5 million years ago, was a period of significant diversification for primates. 
During this time, some primate species developed even longer fingers and more powerful grips, while others began to adapt to a partially terrestrial lifestyle. The diversity of primate hands during this era reflects the range of ecological niches they occupied. It was a time of experimentation in evolution, with different species testing new ways of using their hands to survive. One notable group of primates that thrived during this period was the ancestors of the great apes, including the lineage that would eventually lead to humans. These primates, known as hominoids, had hands that were beginning to show signs of more advanced capabilities. Their thumbs were becoming more opposable, allowing for a better grip on branches. The wrist joints were becoming more flexible, enabling a greater range of movement. This adaptability was crucial for species that lived in forests where the availability of food sources could vary widely. Being able to use their hands to access fruit, insects, and other food sources gave these primates a survival advantage. Despite these advancements, the hands of Miocene primates were still primarily adapted for climbing and arboreal life. They had not yet developed the precision grip that would become a hallmark of later human evolution. The fingers were still long and curved, suited for grasping branches rather than manipulating small objects. The thumb, while more versatile than before, was not yet capable of the intricate movements needed for tool making. The hands of these early primates reflect a balance between strength and mobility, with each adaptation fine tuned to meet the challenges of their environment. The shift from this tree dwelling existence to a more ground based lifestyle would mark the next major stage in the evolution of the hand. But before this transition occurred, early primates had to navigate a world that demanded agility, coordination, and adaptability. Their hands were the key to this survival, serving as the primary means of interacting with their surroundings. This stage of hand evolution is a reminder of how much our anatomy is shaped by the environment and how each adaptation builds upon the last. Understanding the hands of early primates also provides insight into the evolutionary pressures that shape the development of later hominins. The need to navigate complex forest environments selected for hands that could grip, swing, and balance. It was this foundation that would eventually allow our ancestors to develop the more sophisticated grips required for tool use. The hands of early primates were not just an intermediate step, they were a crucial part of the evolutionary pathway that led to modern humans. Their adaptations would echo through millions of years of evolution, leaving a lasting impact on the way our own hands function today. The story of early primates and their hands is a testament to the power of natural selection. It shows how small changes in anatomy can lead to significant evolutionary advantages, and how these advantages can shape the course of an entire lineage. As we move forward in this exploration of the human hand's evolution, we will see how the groundwork laid by these early primates allowed for the development of new capabilities, and how each stage in this journey brought our ancestors one step closer to the hands we use today. Part 3 – Emergence of Bipedalism and its Impact on the Hand The emergence of bipedalism marked a pivotal shift in the evolution of early hominins, this shift not only altered the way our ancestors moved, but it also profoundly impacted the anatomy and function of their hands. Bipedalism freed the hands from the demands of locomotion, allowing them to take on new roles in foraging, tool use, and social interaction. This transition from forelimb to two-limbed movement is one of the defining moments in human evolution, and it set the stage for the development of the versatile hands that characterize our species today. The earliest evidence of bipedalism is found in the fossil record of species like Australopithecus afarensis, a hominin that lived around 4 million years ago in the savannas of East Africa. The famous fossil known as Lucy, discovered in Ethiopia in 1974, provides a crucial window into this stage of evolution. Lucy's skeletal structure shows adaptations for upright walking, including a bowl-shaped pelvis and a foot structure suited for weight-bearing on two legs, Yet, Lucy's hands retained features well adapted for climbing, such as long, curved fingers. This combination of traits suggests that early hominins were still transitioning between life in the trees and life on the ground. The hands, therefore, played a dual role, serving as both a tool for climbing and a means for manipulating objects on the ground. As bipedalism became more established, the hands of early hominins underwent further changes. 
The need for balance and stability while walking on two legs led to a shift in the structure of the shoulders and arms. The arms became less robust compared to those of their tree-dwelling ancestors, reflecting a decreased reliance on climbing. However, the hands remained versatile, capable of grasping and holding objects with a greater degree of control than before. This versatility was crucial as hominins began to explore new ecological niches. It allowed them to gather food, transport items, and eventually experiment with rudimentary tools. The transition to bipedalism also influenced the development of the wrist, a key joint in the evolution of the human hand. In species like Australopithex, the wrist became more capable of flexion and extension, allowing for a wider range of movement. This increased flexibility enabled early hominins to manipulate objects in new ways, such as picking up stones or holding branches for defense or food gathering. The evolution of the wrist was a subtle yet critical change. It provided the foundation for the more advanced tool use seen in later species like Homo habili. Bipedalism had another significant impact on the evolution of the human hand. It freed the hands for activities beyond locomotion. This newfound freedom allowed early hominins to carry food, transport materials, and use their hands for social displays. The ability to carry objects may have had important implications for survival and reproductive success. For example, the ability to gather and carry food over long distances could have helped early hominins support larger social groups. This behavior would have required hands that were not only strong but also capable of a secure grip. As hominins adapted to these new behaviors, the structure of the hand continued to change. The shift to a ground-based lifestyle also brought about changes in diet, and this, in turn, influenced the evolution of the hand. Early hominins like Australopithex likely relied on a mix of plant foods, scavenged meat, and insects. To access these resources, they would have used their hands to dig, break open hard-shelled objects, and possibly defend themselves against predators. These activities placed new demands on the hands, requiring strength, coordination, and the ability to apply controlled pressure. Over time, the hands of early hominins adapted to these challenges, becoming more capable of precision and forceful grips. The dual role of the hands in both climbing and ground-based activities is evident in the fossil record. For example, the hand bones of Australopithic sediba, a species that lived around 2 million years ago, show a mix of features that reflect both climbing ability and the potential for tool use. The fingers of A. sediba are more robust than those of earlier species, indicating a capacity for strong gripping but the thumb is also relatively long, suggesting a greater potential for precision grips. This combination of traits highlights the transitional nature of the hand during this period, a time when hominins were adapting to a new way of life on the ground, while still retaining some characteristics of their arboreal past. The gradual shift from tree-dwelling to ground-dwelling life created an environment where the hands could be used in new and creative ways. Bipedalism was not just a change in how early hominins moved, it was a change in how they interacted with their environment. This new freedom allowed the hands to become a central part of daily life, from gathering food to creating shelters. The versatility of the hands became a key advantage in adapting to the diverse landscapes of ancient Africa. One of the most significant implications of bipedalism for hand evolution was the increased potential for toolmaking. With the hands free from the demands of walking, early hominins could begin to experiment with using stones and other natural materials to perform tasks. This marks the beginning of a long process that would eventually lead to the sophisticated tools made by Homo habili and Homo erectus. The ability to manipulate objects with the hands allowed our ancestors to alter their environment in ways no other species had done before. It was a turning point that would shape the future of human evolution. As we look back at this critical stage in the evolution of the human hand, it becomes clear that the emergence of bipedalism was not just about walking on two legs, it was about opening up new possibilities for how the hands could be used. The hands of early hominins were no longer limited to climbing and grasping branches, they had become tools of adaptation and survival, capable of performing tasks that would have been impossible for their tree-dwelling ancestors. This adaptability set the stage for the next major development in the story of the human hand.
the rise of homo habili and the emergence of true toolmaking behavior. As we move into the next chapter of this story, we will see how the adaptations that arose during the transition to bipedalism laid the foundation for even more specialized hand functions, the evolution of the precision grip, a key trait that would define the next stage of human evolution. The journey of the hand is far from over, and each new stage brings us closer to understanding how our hands became the remarkable instruments they are today. Part 4, Precision Grip and the Rise of Homo Habili. The evolution of the precision grip was a defining moment in the development of the human hand, this ability, which allows for the manipulation of small objects with fine control, set the genus Homo apart from its predecessors, and it marked a significant step toward the sophisticated tool use that would come to define human behavior. The emergence of Homo habili around 2.4 million years ago was a critical turning point in this evolutionary journey. Known as Handyman for its association with early stone tools, Homo habili possessed hands that were uniquely adapted for a new level of dexterity and precision. This species marked the beginning of a new era in which the human hand became a tool for shaping the world. The precision grip is defined by the ability to hold an object between the thumb and one or more fingers. Unlike a power grip, which involves wrapping the fingers around an object for maximum force, the precision grip allows for delicate control over smaller objects. This capability is especially important for tasks like picking up small stones, manipulating sticks, or shaping simple tools, the thumb plays a central role in this grip. It works in opposition to the other fingers, allowing for a pincer-like hold. This opposability was significantly enhanced in Homo habili compared to earlier hominins like Australopithex, making it possible for this species to engage in more complex toolmaking activities. The fossil evidence of Homo habili provides important clues about the changes in hand anatomy that made the precision grip possible. The hand bones of Homo habili are more robust than those of its predecessors, indicating an ability to apply greater force during gripping. Yet, they also show increased flexibility and a greater range of motion in the thumb and wrist. These features allowed Homo habili to manipulate objects with a level of control that was unprecedented in earlier hominins. The development of a stronger and more dexterous thumb is one of the key adaptations that enabled this species to create and use tools and it laid the groundwork for the further evolution of toolmaking skills in later members of the genus Homo. The significance of the precision grip is closely tied to the archaeological evidence of early stone tools. Homo habili is associated with the Old Oan tool culture, a technology characterized by simple stone flakes and cores. These tools were made by striking one stone against another to produce a sharp edge, a process that required both skill and manual dexterity. The ability to hold a stone firmly with one hand while using the other to strike it in a controlled manner is a clear example of the precision grip in action. The creation of these tools marks a major shift in how early humans interacted with their environment. It allowed them to access new food sources, such as cutting through tough animal hides and breaking open bones for marrow. The old Oan tools represent a leap forward in cognitive and motor skills, making them a critical milestone in human evolution. The hands of Homo habili played a direct role in the development of these skills. The precision grip made it possible to manipulate stones in a way that transformed them into functional tools. This new capability also had significant social implications. The ability to create and share tools likely contributed to the development of more complex social interactions. Skills could be passed down from one generation to the next and the sharing of tools may have fostered greater cooperation within groups. The role of the hand in this process cannot be overstated, as it enabled the kinds of interactions that would lay the foundation for the emergence of culture and society. The evolution of the precision grip also highlights the importance of anatomical changes in the wrist and fingers. Homo habili displayed a more flexible wrist joint than its predecessors, which allowed for better control over the angle and force applied when using tools, the bones of the fingers became shorter and more capable of precision manipulation, allowing for a tighter and more controlled grip on small objects. These changes, though subtle in the fossil record, had a profound impact on the abilities of early humans. 
They enabled Homo habili to interact with their environment in a way that no other species had done before, opening up new possibilities for adaptation and survival. The development of the precision grip in Homo habili also had implications for brain evolution. The increased dexterity of the hands is closely linked to changes in the brain's motor cortex, the region that controls fine motor skills. As the hands became more capable of manipulating objects, the brain likely evolved to support more complex planning and coordination. This feedback loop between hand function and brain development is a hallmark of human evolution. It illustrates how physical changes in the body can drive cognitive advancements, and vice versa. The hands and the brain evolved together, each influencing the other in a cycle that ultimately led to the development of more advanced toolmaking capabilities in later species like Homo erectus. The precision grip also played a role in the emergence of early communication. The ability to manipulate objects with precision may have facilitated the use of gestures. As a form of non-verbal communication, this ability to convey meaning through hand movements could have been a precursor to the development of more complex language skills. The hands, therefore, were not just tools for survival. They were also a means of expressing ideas and intentions. The evolution of the precision grip allowed early humans to communicate in new ways, strengthening social bonds and enhancing group cohesion. As Homo habili continued to adapt to its environment, the precision grip became an increasingly important part of its survival strategy. It allowed early humans to take advantage of resources that were previously inaccessible, and it enabled them to modify their environment to better suit their needs. The development of stone tools was just the beginning. It was the first step in a long process that would eventually lead to the creation of more complex technologies. From the Acheulean hand axes of Homo erectus to the advanced tools and weapons of Homo sapiens. The precision grip was the foundation upon which these innovations were built. The story of the precision grip is not just about the physical evolution of the hand. It is about the transformation of the relationship between humans and their environment. It is about the way in which a simple anatomical change opened up a world of new possibilities, and it is about the role that the hand has played in shaping the path of human evolution. The evolution of the precision grip in Homo habili was a key moment in this journey. It marked the point at which the human hand began to transcend its original functions, becoming a tool of creativity and ingenuity. As we look forward to the next stage in this story, we will see how the adaptations that began with Homo habili continued to shape the evolution of our species, leading to even greater levels of complexity and innovation. Part 5. The Role of the Hand in Tool Use and Innovation The role of the hand in human evolution extends far beyond its physical structure. It is closely tied to the story of human innovation and creativity. The development of tools represents one of the most significant leaps in the evolution of our species, and it is a story that revolves around the unique capabilities of the human hand, from the simple stone flakes of Homo habili to the more refined tools of later hominins. The hand has been a driving force in shaping the technological advancements that have defined human history. This chapter explores how the evolving capabilities of the hand enabled early humans to create and use tools transforming their relationship with the environment, and laying the foundation for cultural and technological complexity. The Oldo and Tool culture, associated with Homo habili around 2.6 million years ago, represents the first clear evidence of deliberate toolmaking. These tools were simple, consisting of stone flakes struck from a larger core, but they marked a profound change in the way early humans interacted with their surroundings. The ability to create a sharp edge allowed Homo habili to process food in new ways, such as cutting through tough animal hides, breaking open bones to access nutrient-rich marrow, and even crafting wooden implements. This capability gave early humans a significant survival advantage, allowing them to exploit a wider range of resources. The hands of Homo habili were uniquely suited for creating these tools. Their fingers were strong enough to hold stones firmly while striking them with another stone, yet dexterous enough to control the angle and force of each strike. This combination of strength and precision allowed for the creation of flakes with sharp edges, a skill that required both manual dexterity and cognitive planning. The process of toolmaking was not random, 
It required understanding the properties of different types of stone, and knowing how to apply force in a controlled manner to produce a desired result. The hands were the primary instruments of this process, and they became increasingly specialized to perform these complex tasks. The rise of Homo erectus around 1.9 million years ago brought with it a new level of sophistication in tool use. The Acheulean tool culture, associated with Homo erectus and later species, introduced hand axes and cleavers that were more refined and standardized than the earlier Oldoan tools. These tools required a higher degree of skill to produce, and they reflect a greater understanding of geometry and symmetry. The hand axes of the Acheulean culture were crafted with a deliberate design, featuring bifacial shaping that created sharp edges on both sides. The production of these tools involved striking off flakes from a stone core in a precise sequence, a process that required advanced hand-eye coordination and a detailed mental image of the desired outcome. The hands of Homo erectus continued to show adaptations that supported this new level of toolmaking. Their thumbs were robust and capable of exerting significant force, while their fingers retained the flexibility needed for fine adjustments. The wrist joints of Homo erectus allowed for a greater range of motion, enabling them to apply controlled pressure during the toolmaking process. These adaptations made the hands of Homo erectus highly effective for shaping stone tools, and they reflect the growing importance of the hand in early human culture. The creation of Acheulean. Hand axes was not just about making tools, it was also about the transmission of knowledge. The skills required to produce these tools would have been shared within groups, passed down through generations, creating a continuity of cultural tradition that stretched across thousands of years. The role of the hand in early tool use was not limited to stone tools. Early humans also used their hands to craft wooden tools and weapons, such as digging sticks and spears. These tools required different skills than those used in stone toolmaking, but they still depended on the hand's ability to shape and manipulate materials. The creation of wooden tools allowed early humans to access resources in new ways, digging for roots and tubers, spearing fish and small game, and even constructing simple shelters. The hand's ability to grip and shape materials was key to this process. It allowed early humans to adapt to a variety of environments from the savannas of Africa to the colder climates of Eurasia. The connection between the hand and tool use also had a profound impact on social and cognitive development. The process of making and using tools required not only manual skill, but also communication and cooperation. As early humans shared knowledge about toolmaking, they likely developed new ways of communicating, including gestures and perhaps early forms of language. The hands played a central role in this process serving as tools for both making and demonstrating. The transmission of knowledge, whether through the demonstration of toolmaking techniques or the use of gestures to coordinate group activities, created a sense of shared learning that would become a hallmark of human culture. The evolution of tool use is closely linked to the development of the brain. The increased manual dexterity of the hands went hand in hand with changes in brain size and organization, especially in areas related to motor control and planning. This coevolution of the brain and hands is evident in the expansion of the motor cortex and regions associated with spatial reasoning and problem solving. As early humans became more proficient in using their hands to manipulate the environment, their brains adapted to support these new abilities. This feedback loop between hand function and brain development was a driving force in the evolution of human intelligence. It allowed our ancestors to innovate and adapt to changing conditions, and it laid the groundwork for the complex societies that would follow. As the story of human evolution progressed, the hand's role in tool use continued to expand. By the time of Homo neanderthalensis, who lived around 400,000 to 40,000 years ago, toolmaking had become even more advanced. Neanderthals crafted a variety of tools, including finely crafted flint blades and bone tools. Their hands were strong and capable of withstanding the rigors of working with hard materials but they also possessed the dexterity needed to create intricate designs. The hands of Neanderthals were instrumental in their ability to adapt to the harsh climates of Ice Age Europe, enabling them to hunt large game, prepare hides for clothing, and build shelters for protection against the cold. The role of the hand in tool use and innovation is a testament to the adaptability of the human species. It shows how small anatomical changes, such as a more flexible thumb or a stronger grip, 
could have far-reaching implications for survival and cultural development, the hands allowed early humans to transform their environment, creating tools that made life easier and more secure. This ability to innovate and adapt was a key factor in the success of our species. It enabled our ancestors to thrive in a wide range of habitats, from the African savannas to the Arctic tundra. The hands, as instruments of both survival and creativity, played a central role in this journey. As we move forward in this exploration of the evolution of the human hand, we will see how the innovations that began with stone tools and basic implements evolved into more complex cultural expressions, from art and symbolic communication to the creation of social networks. The story of the hand is not just a story of physical evolution, it is a story of how humans learn to shape their world, and how this process of shaping and being shaped by the environment continues to define what it means to be human. Part 6 the human hand in Homo erectus and Homo neanderthalensis. The evolution of the human hand continued to progress with the emergence of Homo erectus and Homo neanderthalensis. These two species represent crucial stages in the development of more advanced tool use and social behavior. Their hands were adapted not only for survival, but also for the increasingly complex tasks that define their way of life. As the anatomy of their hands evolved, it opened up new possibilities for innovation and cultural expression. These changes were key to their ability to adapt to diverse and challenging environments, making their hand central to their evolutionary success. Homo erectus appeared around 1.9 million years ago, and is often regarded as one of the first true members of the genus Homo. This species was characterized by a larger brain, a more human-like body structure, and a more advanced approach to toolmaking. The hands of Homo erectus show a further refinement in the adaptations that began with Homo habili. They were capable of producing tools of the Acheulean tradition, including the iconic hand axes that required a high degree of skill and planning. The ability to shape a stone into a symmetrical and functional tool marks a significant leap in the cognitive and manual abilities of Homo erectus and their hands played a crucial role in this process. The thumb of Homo erectus was robust and well-suited for a power grip, allowing them to grasp and manipulate larger objects with force. This feature was essential for tasks like shaping hand axes, which required precise control over the angle and impact of each strike. The fingers, while still strong, had evolved to be more capable of handling a variety of grips. This versatility enabled Homo erectus to perform both heavy-duty tasks, such as breaking open bones with stone tools, and more delicate activities, like fashioning smaller implements for cutting and scraping. The structure of their hands reflects a balance between strength and precision, a combination that allowed Homo erectus to adapt to new challenges as they spread out of Africa and into Asia and Europe. The Acheulean hand axes crafted by Homo erectus represent a significant advancement over the earlier Oldoan tools. These tools were more standardized in shape, suggesting that they were made with a clear understanding of form and function. The hands of Homo erectus were capable of creating these tools with a level of consistency that indicates a more refined sense of planning and coordination. This ability to envision and execute a specific design required not only manual dexterity, but also cognitive skills related to spatial awareness and problem solving. The hand's role in this process highlights its importance as a bridge between the physical and mental aspects of toolmaking. It allowed Homo erectus to engage with their environment in a way that no previous hominin could. As Homo erectus spread across continents, they encountered new environments and challenges. Their hands, with their ability to craft and use a variety of tools, were key to their survival in diverse climates. In colder regions, they may have used their hands to create shelters, build fires, and fashion clothing from animal hides. These adaptations enabled Homo erectus to extend their range far beyond that of their ancestors, and their hands were at the center of this expansion. The ability to manipulate their surroundings with precision and strength gave Homo erectus the flexibility to thrive in new territories, and it marked a significant step forward in the story of human evolution. The evolution of the hand continued with Homo neanderthalensis, 
commonly known as Neanderthals, who lived between 400,000 and 40,000 years ago in Europe and parts of Western Asia. Neanderthals were physically robust, adapted to the harsh conditions of Ice Age Europe. Their hands, like those of Homo erectus, were strong and capable of handling demanding tasks, but they also exhibited a level of dexterity that allowed for the creation of more specialized tools. The hands of Neanderthals reflect their ability to adapt to a wide range of environments, and they played a critical role in their complex social and cultural behaviors. Neanderthal hands were particularly suited for tasks that required a combination of force and precision. Their thumbs were more similar in size to those of modern humans than to earlier hominins, and their fingers were strong but flexible. These features allowed Neanderthals to craft tools with a high degree of control. They created a variety of tools using the Leveloi technique, a method that involved preparing a stone core in a precise manner before striking off a flake. This technique required the ability to manipulate the stone with fine motor skills, using the hands to shape the core and strike off flakes in a controlled manner. The sophistication of these tools suggests that Neanderthals had a deep understanding of their materials, and the skill to shape them into effective tools for hunting, butchering, and other survival tasks. Neanderthals also used their hands to create tools from materials other than stone, including bone, wood, and antler. These materials required different handling techniques, and the versatility of their hands enabled them to adapt to these challenges. For example, wooden spears crafted by Neanderthals show signs of careful shaping and smoothing, suggesting that they used their hands not only for the initial crafting, but also for fine-tuning the final product. This ability to work with a range of materials allowed Neanderthals to create tools that were specifically adapted to their needs and it demonstrates the advanced capabilities of their hands. In addition to their role in toolmaking, the hands of Neanderthals played a part in the creation of symbolic and artistic expressions. Archaeological evidence suggests that Neanderthals engaged in activities like creating cave art and possibly making decorative items, such as pierced shells and simple ornaments. These activities required a level of manual dexterity and control that speaks to the versatility of their hands. The use of hands in artistic expression suggests that Neanderthals had a cognitive and cultural complexity that went beyond mere survival. It indicates that their hands were not only tools for manipulating the physical world, but also instruments for expressing ideas and creativity. The hands of Neanderthals were also central to their ability to survive in the challenging climates of Ice Age Europe. They used their hands to build shelters, constructing windbreaks and huts using materials like branches, hides, and bones. These shelters provided protection against the cold, allowing Neanderthals to survive in environments where other species might have struggled. Their hands also played a role in processing food, including the preparation of meat from large game animals. The ability to use tools effectively for butchering and cooking helped Neanderthals to maximize the nutritional value of their food and their hands were key to these daily survival tasks. While Homo erectus and Neanderthals each adapted their hands to meet the challenges of their time, their contributions to the evolution of the human hand laid the groundwork for the capabilities seen in modern humans. Their hands were strong, versatile, and capable of performing a wide range of tasks. They were the instruments of survival, but also of creativity and cultural expression. The adaptations seen in their hands reflect a complex interplay between physical evolution and environmental pressures, and they show how the hand continued to evolve as early humans adapted to new ways of life. The story of the hand in Homo erectus and Neanderthals is a story of innovation and resilience. It is a story of how these species used their hands to shape their tools, their environments, and their cultures. The hands allowed them to adapt to new challenges and in doing so, they set the stage for the emergence of Homo sapiens, and the even more sophisticated tools and cultural practices that would come with them. As we continue to explore the evolution of the human hand, we will see how these early adaptations provided the foundation for the even greater complexity that defines our species. Part 7. Modern Human Hands and the Fine-Tuning of Dexterity the evolution of the human hand reached a critical point with the emergence of Homo sapiens around 300,000 years ago. 
While earlier hominins like Homo erectus and Homo neanderthalensis had developed hands capable of making and using tools, modern humans took these capabilities to an entirely new level. The hands of Homo sapiens were finely tuned for a wide range of complex tasks. From crafting intricate tools to creating art and expressing complex ideas, the fine-tuning of dexterity in modern human hands is one of the defining features of our species, and it has played a crucial role in the development of culture, technology, and social complexity. One of the key differences between the hands of Homo sapiens and those of earlier hominins lies in the structure of the fingers and thumb. The fingers of modern humans are relatively short compared to those of species like Neanderthals, and the thumb is more robust and positioned in a way that allows for a wider range of motion. This anatomical arrangement is ideal for performing precision grips, where the thumb can touch the tips of each finger with ease. This capability allows modern humans to perform delicate tasks, such as threading a needle, tying knots, or carving intricate designs into bone and wood. The thumb's enhanced opposability is a hallmark of our species' ability to manipulate small objects with incredible accuracy. The changes in finger length and thumb structure have a direct impact on the types of tools that Homo sapiens can create. Unlike the larger, more robust tools used by Neanderthals, the tools made by early Homo sapiens are often smaller and more finely crafted. The blades and points produced during the Upper Paleolithic period, around 50,000 to 10,000 years ago, showcase a level of precision that was not seen in earlier tool cultures. These tools were often made using a technique called pressure flaking, where small flakes of stone are carefully removed to shape a sharp edge. This method requires an advanced level of hand control, and it demonstrates how the fine-tuning of the human hand enabled new technological innovations. The ability of Homo sapiens to craft and use complex tools had profound implications for their ability to survive and adapt. With their finely tuned hands, early humans could create tools for hunting, fishing, and gathering in a variety of environments. They crafted needles from bone and antler, allowing them to sew clothing from animal hides and better protect themselves from the elements. They made fishing hooks and harpoons, enabling them to exploit aquatic resources that were previously out of reach. The hands of Homo sapiens allowed them to adapt to new challenges and environments, and this adaptability was a key factor in their success as they spread across the globe. Beyond their role in toolmaking, the hands of modern humans also played a significant role in the development of art and symbolic expression. The ability to create detailed cave paintings, carve figurines, and produce intricate jewelry is closely tied to the advanced manual dexterity of the human hand. Sites like the caves of Lascours in France, which feature stunning depictions of animals and abstract symbols, show how early humans used their hands to convey stories and ideas. These artistic expressions are a testament to the cognitive and cultural complexity of Homo sapiens, and they highlight the hand's role as a tool of communication and creativity. The creation of art required not only the ability to manipulate pigments and tools, but also the capacity for abstract thought, and the hands were the instruments that brought these thoughts into the physical world. The evolution of fine motor skills in Homo sapiens is also evident in the way we use our hands for communication. The use of gestures, whether to convey instructions, express emotions, or communicate across distances, has likely been a part of human behavior for tens of thousands of years. The hands, with their ability to perform a wide range of movements, are uniquely suited to this form of expression. The dexterity of the human hand allows for the creation of complex gestures, and these gestures may have played a role in the development of spoken language. Even today, sign languages around the world demonstrate the hand's capacity for nuanced communication showing how our ancestors may have used their hands to convey meaning before the advent of verbal language. The relationship between hand dexterity and brain development is another important aspect of the evolution of Homo sapiens. As the hands became more capable of performing intricate tasks, the brain also adapted to support these new abilities. 
Studies of the human brain reveal that a significant portion of the motor cortex is dedicated to controlling the hands. This specialization reflects the importance of hand movements in our daily lives, and it highlights the coevolution of the brain and hands. The feedback loop between hand use and brain development has been a driving force in the evolution of human intelligence, and it continues to shape the way we interact with the world today. The fine-tuning of the human hand also had social implications. The ability to create and share tools, build shelters, and produce art fostered a sense of community and cooperation. These activities required not only manual skills, but also the ability to teach and learn. The hands became a means of transmitting knowledge, whether through the demonstration of toolmaking techniques or the crafting of objects that carried cultural significance. This capacity for cultural transmission helped early humans to build more complex social structures, and it allowed them to pass on their knowledge from one generation to the next, creating a continuity of tradition that is a hallmark of human societies. As Homo sapiens spread across the globe, their hands enabled them to adapt to a wide range of environments, from the tropical forests of Southeast Asia to the tundras of Siberia. The versatility of their hands allowed them to modify their surroundings to suit their needs. This adaptability was not just a matter of survival. It was also a key factor in the development of early agriculture and the rise of settled communities. With their hands, early humans could plant and harvest crops, domesticate animals, and construct permanent dwellings. The ability to manipulate the environment in such a controlled and deliberate way set the stage for the development of complex societies, and it shows how the hand continued to play a central role in shaping the course of human history. The modern human hand remains a symbol of the unique capabilities of our species. It is an instrument of creation and innovation, capable of performing tasks that range from the simple to the sublime. From the first stone tools to the construction of monumental architecture, the hands have been at the heart of our technological and cultural achievements. They are the tools through which we shape the world, and they reflect the deep connection between our physical evolution and our intellectual progress. The journey of the human hand is a story of adaptation, creativity, and the enduring drive to understand and master our environment. As we continue to explore the evolution of the human hand, it becomes clear that each stage of development has built upon the last, from the first adaptations that allowed our ancestors to grasp branches in the trees, to the fine-tuned dexterity that enables modern humans to play musical instruments and perform surgery. The story of the hand is a testament to the power of evolution. It is a story that continues to unfold, as new challenges and technologies push the limits of what our hands can do, and as we look to the future. The hands will remain a central part of the human experience, reminding us of the long journey that has brought us to where we are today. Part 8 The Role of Hands in Art, Culture, and Communication The evolution of the human hand is not just a story of physical adaptation, it is deeply intertwined with the development of art, culture, and communication. As Homo sapiens refined their manual dexterity, their hands became instruments for creating and expressing ideas that went beyond mere survival. The ability to use hands for artistic expression, craft complex tools, and communicate through gestures played a significant role in the rise of human culture. It allowed early humans to share knowledge, transmit traditions, and form social bonds. This chapter explores how the hands contributed to the development of art and symbolic expression and how this ability laid the foundation for complex societies. One of the most striking examples of the hand's role in early human culture is the creation of cave art. Found in locations such as Lascaux in France and Altamira in Spain, these prehistoric paintings date back tens of thousands of years. They depict animals, human figures, and abstract symbols. The process of creating these artworks required a high degree of manual skill. Early humans used their hands to grind minerals into pigments, mix them with binders like animal fat, and apply them to the walls of caves using brushes, fingers, or even blowing through hollow bones. The creation of cave art represents a form of symbolic thinking. It shows that early humans were using their hands to express ideas and stories, reflecting a cognitive leap that was crucial in the development of human culture.
In addition to painting, early humans used their hands to carve and shape objects from a variety of materials. They crafted figurines from bone, ivory, and stone, such as the famous Venus figurines found across Europe. These small sculptures often depicted human figures or animals, and they likely held cultural or spiritual significance. The process of carving these objects required a precise control of the hands, as each detail was carefully shaped to reflect a particular vision or meaning. The ability to create these objects suggests that early humans were using their hands not only as tools for survival, but as a means of engaging with the world on a symbolic and emotional level. The hands, therefore, became a bridge between the physical and the abstract, allowing humans to give shape to their thoughts and beliefs. The hands also played a critical role in the development of early forms of communication. Long before the advent of spoken language, early humans may have used gestures as a way of conveying information. The versatility of the human hand makes it ideal for this purpose. It can perform a wide range of movements, from pointing and waving to more complex signals that convey specific meanings. This gestural communication would have been especially important in coordinating group activities like hunting, sharing knowledge about toolmaking techniques, or expressing emotions during social interactions. The hands allowed early humans to communicate in ways that went beyond vocalizations, enhancing their ability to work together and build social cohesion. The role of gestures in human communication is still evident today. Sign languages used by deaf communities around the world are a testament to the hands' ability to convey rich and nuanced meaning. These languages use a combination of hand shapes, movements, and facial expressions to create a complex system of communication. The ability of the hands to articulate subtle variations in shape and movement makes them uniquely suited for this purpose. It highlights how our hands are not just tools for manipulating objects, but also for expressing thoughts and ideas in a visual and tactile form. This capacity for nonverbal communication may have played a key role in the early development of language, providing a foundation upon which verbal language could later build. The connection between hand use and cognitive development is also evident in the way early humans used their hands to create and share cultural artifacts. The hands became a means of transmitting knowledge and tradition, whether through the demonstration of toolmaking techniques, the crafting of objects with cultural significance, or the creation of art that told stories and expressed beliefs. This ability to pass down knowledge and skills from one generation to the next is a defining feature of human culture. It allowed early humans to build on the achievements of their ancestors, creating a continuity of tradition that strengthened social bonds and fostered a sense of shared identity. The hands were at the center of this process, acting as tools of both creation and instruction. The hands also played a role in the spiritual and ritualistic practices of early humans. In many cultures, hands have been used in rituals as symbols of power, blessing, and connection to the divine. Imprints of human hands found on cave walls, sometimes alongside depictions of animals or abstract patterns, suggest that these early artists saw the hand itself as a symbol of human presence and identity. By placing their handprints on cave walls, early humans may have been making a mark that said, I was here. I am part of this world. This act of leaving a handprint is a form of self-expression that transcends time. It links the physical presence of the individual to the larger context of their community and environment. The ability to use hands for creating objects of beauty and meaning also contributed to the development of trade and economic systems. As early human groups began to settle and form more complex societies, the exchange of crafted items became an important aspect of social interaction. Beads, carved objects, and other items made by hand became valuable for their beauty and the skill required to create them. This exchange of crafted items not only helped to establish social connections between groups, but also created a sense of value around the work done by hand. The hands became a means of creating and exchanging symbols of wealth and status, reinforcing social structures and relationships. As the story of human culture evolved, the hands continued to play a central role in the development of new forms of expression. The invention of writing, which emerged around 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia and Egypt, 
represents another key moment in the history of the hand. Writing allowed humans to record their thoughts, laws, and stories in a permanent form, and the act of writing itself is a highly skilled use of the hands. The development of scripts and alphabets required fine motor skills and precision. As individuals used styluses, brushes, and later pens to inscribe words onto clay tablets, papyrus, or parchment, the ability to write transformed human communication, allowing ideas to be preserved across time and space, and it demonstrated how the hand continued to evolve alongside the mind. The story of the human hand in art, culture, and communication is a story of how our species learned to use its most versatile tool to create meaning. It shows how the physical capabilities of the hand enabled new ways of thinking and interacting with the world, and how each new use of the hands opened up new possibilities for expression and understanding. From the first cave paintings to the intricate art of calligraphy, the hands have allowed humans to shape their cultural landscape in ways that are both tangible and deeply symbolic. They have been the tools through which we make sense of the world, share our experiences with others, and leave a mark that endures beyond our own time. As we move forward in the story of the evolution of the human hand, we will see how these early forms of art, culture, and communication laid the groundwork for even more complex societies. The hands of Homo sapiens became the means through which we built cities, created literature, and constructed the physical and cultural structures that define the human experience today. The journey of the hand is not just a journey through biological evolution, it is also a journey through the evolution of thought, creativity, and community, a journey that continues to shape who we are and how we understand our place in the world. Part 9 Comparative Analysis with Other Primates To fully understand the evolution of the human hand, it is essential to compare it with the hands of our closest relatives in the primate family. This comparison offers valuable insights into what makes the human hand unique, and how small anatomical differences can lead to significant changes in behavior and capabilities. The hands of chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans share many similarities with those of humans but they also reflect the different evolutionary paths that these species have taken. By examining the hands of these other primates, we can see how the human hand developed its distinctive blend of strength, precision, and versatility. The hands of chimpanzees are particularly useful for understanding the evolutionary roots of the human hand. Chimpanzees and humans share a common ancestor that lived around 6 to 7 million years ago and their hands retain many features that are similar to those of early hominins. Chimpanzees have long fingers and a relatively short thumb. Their fingers are curved, which is ideal for grasping and swinging from branches in their arboreal environment. This adaptation allows them to move through the forest canopy with ease, using their hands to grip branches as they navigate their surroundings. The short thumb of the chimpanzee is less suited for precision grips, which limits their ability to manipulate small objects with the same level of control as humans. However, they can still use their hands to perform a variety of tasks, such as using sticks to extract termites from mounds, or cracking nuts with stones. These behaviors demonstrate a basic level of tool use and problem solving, but they highlight the differences in manual dexterity between chimpanzees and humans. One of the most significant differences between the hands of chimpanzees and humans is the structure of the thumb. The human thumb is longer relative to the fingers, and it is positioned in a way that allows for a greater range of opposition. This opposability is a key factor in the human ability to perform precision grips, which are essential for tasks like writing, sewing, and using tools with fine control. In contrast, the thumb of a chimpanzee is positioned lower on the hand making it less capable of touching the tips of the other fingers. This anatomical difference means that while chimpanzees can grasp objects powerfully with a power grip, they lack the ability to perform the delicate movements required for making complex tools. The evolution of the thumb in humans represents a shift towards greater versatility in hand use, allowing for the development of behaviors that are unique to our species. Gorillas, another close relative of humans, also have hands that reflect their specialized adaptations to their environment. 
Gorillas are primarily terrestrial and move using a form of locomotion called knuckle walking. This mode of movement places significant weight on their hands, and their fingers are adapted to support their body weight as they move across the forest floor. Like chimpanzees, gorillas have long fingers and a short thumb, which is less suited for precision manipulation. However, they can use their hands to perform a range of activities, such as stripping leaves from branches or building nests for sleeping. The structure of their hands is well suited for their lifestyle, but it lacks the flexibility and fine control seen in human hands. The adaptation to knuckle walking in gorillas highlights how different environmental pressures can shape the evolution of hand anatomy in distinct ways. Orangutans offer another perspective on the evolution of the primate hand. As the largest arboreal primates, orangutans spend most of their lives in the trees of Southeast Asian rainforests. Their hands are highly specialized for this environment, with long, curved fingers that allow them to grasp branches with great strength and precision. Orangutans have a remarkable ability to move through the forest canopy, using their hands and feet to suspend themselves and reach for fruit. Their hands are less adapted for terrestrial locomotion compared to chimpanzees and gorillas, and they retain a high degree of flexibility in their wrists and fingers. This flexibility allows them to navigate their complex three-dimensional environment with ease, but it comes at the expense of the more refined precision grip seen in humans. Orangutans can use tools in captivity, but their ability to do so is more limited in the wild, reflecting the different evolutionary pressures they have faced. The differences in hand structure between humans and other primates highlight the unique evolutionary path that led to the development of the human hand. While chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans have retained many of the traits that are useful for life in the trees, the hands of Homo sapiens have evolved to support a much wider range of functions. The shift towards bipedalism in early hominins played a crucial role in this process, as it freed the hands from the demands of locomotion. This freedom allowed the hands to evolve for tasks that required greater dexterity and control, such as making tools, creating art, and manipulating the environment in increasingly complex ways. The human hand is a product of millions of years of adaptation to new challenges and opportunities, and it reflects a balance between strength, flexibility, and precision that is unparalleled in the primate world. One of the key aspects of this comparison is the role of the wrist in enabling different types of hand movements. The wrists of humans and other primates are similar in their basic structure, but they have adapted to different functions. The human wrist has a greater range of motion in flexion and extension, allowing for a wider variety of grips and hand positions. This adaptability is crucial for tasks that require fine motor control, such as writing or using a tool with a delicate touch. In contrast, the wrists of chimpanzees and gorillas are more stable, providing support for their weight during climbing or knuckle walking. This stability is beneficial for their modes of movement but it limits the flexibility needed for certain types of precision tasks. The differences in wrist structure are a reminder of how each species has evolved to meet the specific demands of its environment. While the hands of humans and other primates differ in many ways, they also share a common evolutionary heritage. The basic structure of the hand, with five digits, an opposable thumb, and a complex arrangement of muscles and tendons, has been a successful adaptation across a wide range of primate species. This shared heritage reflects the deep evolutionary roots of the primate hand, and it highlights how small changes in anatomy can lead to significant differences in behavior and capabilities. The comparison between human hands and those of other primates shows that the journey from simple grasping to complex tool use was not a single leap, but a gradual process of adaptation and refinement. Each step in this journey contributed to the development of the hand's unique role in shaping the human experience. The study of primate hands offers valuable insights into the evolutionary pressures that shaped our own hands. It shows how different species have adapted to their environments, using their hands in ways that reflect their ecological niches and lifestyles. For humans, the evolution of the hand enabled new ways of interacting with the world, leading to the development of culture, technology, and social complexity. The hands of chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans provide a window into the past, 
allowing us to see the path that our ancestors might have taken, and how the unique capabilities of the human hand emerged from a shared lineage. As we look forward to the final chapter of this exploration of the human hand's evolution, we will see how the hands have continued to adapt in response to new challenges, and how the role of the hands has changed in the context of modern technology and society. The comparison with other primates provides a foundation for understanding what makes the human hand special, and it reminds us of the long evolutionary journey that has brought us to where we are today. The hands remain a symbol of our connection to the natural world, as well as our ability to transcend it through innovation and creativity. Part 10, The Future of the Human Hand and Its Role in Technology The story of the human hand is one of constant adaptation, from the first primates that grasped branches in the dense forests of ancient earth, to the early hominins who shaped stone tools on the African savannas, the human hand has been central to our survival and success. Today, as we stand at the crossroads of biological evolution and technological advancement, the role of the human hand continues to evolve. This final chapter explores how the hand has adapted to modern technology, how new challenges are shaping its function, and what the future might hold for this remarkable part of our anatomy. One of the most significant changes in the role of the human hand over the past few centuries is its interaction with technology. The Industrial Revolution introduced machines and tools that required precise manipulation, leading to a shift in how humans use their hands in daily life. The hands that once shaped stone and would now turn the gears of machines, operate levers and switches, and assemble complex devices on factory floors. This change in the nature of work placed new demands on the dexterity and endurance of the hands, as people adapted to tasks that required repetitive movements, precision, and coordination, the hands became instruments of productivity in a new kind of environment, reflecting the adaptability that has always defined their evolution. In the 21st century, the relationship between the human hand and technology has become even more complex. The rise of digital technology has transformed how we interact with the world. Our hands are now the primary interface between our physical selves and the digital realm. Touchscreens, keyboards, and computer mice have become extensions of our hands, allowing us to manipulate information and connect with others across the globe. The fine motor skills that once shaped tools and art now type messages, swipe through screens, and create digital content. This shift has redefined the skills associated with manual dexterity, emphasizing precision in a virtual rather than a physical space. While the interaction with digital devices has expanded the capabilities of the human hand, it has also introduced new challenges. The repetitive motions required for typing and using a mouse can lead to conditions like carpal tunnel syndrome, which result from the strain placed on the wrist and fingers over time. This condition highlights the fact that the human hand, though adaptable, is still bound by the physical limits of its structure. As people spend more time working with digital devices, new forms of strain and injury have emerged, prompting a need for ergonomic design and better understanding of how to care for the hands in a digital age. The future of the human hand may involve finding ways to balance the demands of technology with the need for maintaining physical well-being. Another frontier in the evolution of the human hand is the integration of robotics and prosthetics. Advances in biomedical engineering have made it possible to create prosthetic hands that closely mimic the movements of natural hands. For individuals who have lost a limb, these prosthetics offer a way to regain the ability to grasp, hold, and manipulate objects. Modern prosthetic hands are increasingly capable of responding to neural signals from the brain allowing for precise control and a more intuitive use. This technology is pushing the boundaries of what the human hand can do, extending its capabilities beyond its biological origins. It represents a new chapter in the evolution of the hand, one that is shaped not by natural selection, but by human ingenuity and innovation. The development of robotic hands also has implications for the future of human-machine interaction. As robots become more integrated into everyday life, the ability of these machines to manipulate objects with human-like dexterity will be crucial. Robotic hands are being designed to perform delicate tasks in industries like surgery, manufacturing, and space exploration. 
they are also being developed for use in everyday settings, where they can assist with tasks that require a gentle touch or precise movements. The creation of robotic hands that can match or even exceed the capabilities of human hands raises questions about the future of work and the role of humans in an increasingly automated world. It challenges us to think about how we will define the unique capabilities of the human hand in a world where machines can replicate many of its functions. Virtual reality VR, and augmented reality AR, are also reshaping how we use our hands. These technologies rely on hand tracking devices that allow users to interact with virtual environments through natural gestures. VR and AR systems translate the movements of the hands into digital actions creating a sense of immersion and allowing users to manipulate virtual objects as if they were real. This represents a new way of using the hands to interact with the world, blurring the line between physical and digital reality. The skills required to navigate these virtual environments are becoming increasingly important in fields like gaming, education, and remote work. The hands, once confined to interacting with tangible objects, are now playing a role in shaping experiences in a digital space. The future of the human hand is also closely linked to the field of neurotechnology. Scientists and engineers are exploring ways to connect the brain directly to machines, allowing users to control robotic limbs or computer interfaces through thought alone. This brain-computer interface, BCI, technology has the potential to revolutionize the way we use our hands by allowing for more seamless and direct control of prosthetics or other devices. It could provide new opportunities for those with disabilities, and it could fundamentally change how we think about the connection between mind and body. The development of BCIs represents a continuation of the evolutionary story of the hand, pushing the boundaries of what human hands can achieve through the fusion of biology and technology. Despite these technological advancements, the human hand remains deeply rooted in its evolutionary history. It is still the tool that allows us to connect with the world in a tactile and immediate way. The sense of touch, which has evolved over millions of years, continues to play a vital role in how we experience our surroundings, whether through the softness of a fabric, the warmth of a handshake, or the texture of a sculpture. The ability to feel and respond to these sensations is a reminder of the hand's origins in the natural world. Even as we move into an increasingly digital age, the hands retain their capacity to ground us in the physical reality of our environment. Looking forward, the evolution of the human hand will likely continue to be shaped by our interaction with new technologies. As we develop more advanced tools and interfaces, the hand will adapt to meet the challenges and opportunities they present. The potential for merging biological and mechanical capabilities offers exciting possibilities but it also raises ethical and philosophical questions about what it means to be human. How we choose to use and enhance our hands will shape not only the future of our species, but also our relationship with the technology we create. The human hand has always been a tool for shaping the world, and it will continue to play this role as we navigate the complexities of the future. The story of the human hand is not just a story of biological evolution. It is also a story of adaptation to the cultural and technological landscapes we have built. From the first stone tools to the digital age, the hands have been at the center of human progress. They have enabled us to create, communicate, and connect with each other in ways that are both simple and profound. As we look to the future, the hands will remain a symbol of our capacity for innovation, and they will continue to remind us of the long journey that has brought us to this point the journey from the trees to the stars, and beyond. The human hand is a testament to our ability to adapt and evolve, and it will continue to be a guiding force in the next chapter of human history. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the evolution of the human hand. We hope you have gained new insights into how this remarkable tool shaped our society and history Stay tuned to History Forge for more deep dives into the stories that make us who we are. See you next time.